Hello everyone, how are you? Hey, like, know what matches happened on Monday Night Raw for July the 18th, 2022. Bianca Belair, again, faced Kamala for the Raw Women's Championship. This is three times in a row now. But this time they made it the stipulation that the title could change hands by count out. So Kamala twice kept trying to get Bianca Belair counted out. Like the first time she, uh, tossed her over a barricade. Bianca got in the count of eight. Then she tossed her off the top rope, but Bianca Bauer hit the ring steps face first, and she got in the count of nine. Kamala got mad, um, slapped her down. Then she went to do like a sunset flip into a pinfall, and Bianca was supposed to fall over, but she just stood there dumbfounded. Um, Bianca Bauer hit the cartwheel moonsault. Kamala Creaky answered back with the axe factor. That was an awesome sequence. Um, Bianca Barrier will hit the KOD driver for the 1-2-3 to retain the Raw Women's Championship. After the match, Becky Lynch got up on the ring apron and held Bianca's title because they're going to be facing off a SummerSlam. Six warm tag match happened. Alexa Bliss teamed up with Asuka and Dana Brooke, your 24-7 champion, against Nikki Cross, Piper Niven, and Tamia Snook. And a heavy match that Dana Brooke's in that is not for a title... They usually announced that the 24-7 championship rule is suspended until after the match. They didn't do it. So, like, 30 seconds in the match, Akira Tozel pinned Dana Brooke. Everybody started pinning everybody. Total, it, honestly, it was a piece of shit match, folks. It was total goddamn absolute garbage. The only one that didn't even go for the 24-7 title was Asuka. Finally, after Dana Brooke got it back, she took off. Tamina Snuka chased her. In the ring, Oscar grabbed hold of Nikki Cross, applied an arm bar into the Oscar lock for the quick tap out. Yeah, that 24 7 title has got to go. It's, oh my god. And if this is supposed to be PG 14, this ain't the way to do it. That's like something like PG 2 or something. Yeah, I'm going to be doing a separate video about the 24 7 title, what I think of it, and what they should do with it. Honestly, I'm. I actually think about doing one. Let me know below if you think I should do a video dis discussing what I think about the 24-7 title since it first came in the other V, what they should do with it and all that. Because trust me, it's going to be a good video, folks. Because I hate that title belt so much. And that 6-1 match was the main event match. Like, you put on that piece of shit garbage as your main event. And nobody in attendance cared for this none whatsoever when the 24-7 title was being changed back and forth. So that should wake up WWE right there, but nope, probably not. Omos took on Daniel Dawkins of the Street Profits one on one. This match came about after a backstage segment. A couple seconds of the match, Omos got disqualified because MVP got involved. So of course it became a tag match. The Street Profits against MVP and Omos. MVP and Omos isolated Daniel Dawkins. Omos stood on his hand. MVP did a knee drop, then elbow drop, and then finally Dawkins got away, tagged in Montez Ford, who jumped in, started doing some kick strikes on Almos to stun him. Then the Prophets had a double team drop kick to one in each leg of Almos, and then a double team super kick. Then Montez Ford quickly hit the top row frog splash and got a one count. Almos kicked out of the count of one. He went to do it again, and the Usos attacked. So the Prophets won by disqualification again. And then the Usos laid out the Street Profits. I was actually happy the Street Usos did not wrestle. But they still had to be on the show, of course. Seth Rollins was approached backstage by Elias. Elias wanted a rematch. So, Seth Rollins and Elias faced off. Very really good match, folks. Check this match out. High hit action again. Like, Elias, at one point, just smashed Seth Rollins face first into the ring post. Like, you can hear the smack. Um, Seth Rollins hit that top rope superplex he does right into the Falcon Arrow sequence. Um, Elias hit his stinger splash in the corner. Then he hit that um, stand-up kick he did, hit stand kick he did. Um, Seth Rollins started punching Elias in the corner. Pummel on him, and Elias started fighting right out of that corner, folks, throwing haymakers. That uh, just blasted Seth Rollins with the spine buster. 
He went for the drift away. Seth Rollins countered that. Went for a pinfall. Elias kicked out. Seth went for the curb stomp. Elias moved out of the way. Pinned Seth for a two count. Seth Rollins had enough and curb stomped Elias for the one, two, three. Um, sorry. See what? Oh, yes. Oh, so. Dominic Mysterio occupied his father Ray to ringside. Ray Mysterio took on Damian Priest of Judgment Day with Finn Bauer ringside. I want Ray Ripley to come back. I don't know what has happened to her. Um, I read online that she suffered a, a kick to the head in one of the matches and she was on concussion protocol for safety reasons. But then, that was like a few weeks ago. She should be ready to come back. But then um, on Twitter, it showed a picture of her and uh, some kind of like. People are saying it's like kind of monitor hooked up to her, but I can't tell if it is or not. And the internet these, these days, you don't know what is real and true or not. But come on, Brie Ripley, come back. I miss you. Um, again, before the match, um, Judgment Day tried to recruit Dominic into their stable. Again, Dominic refused. Rey Mysterio had enough. Knocked down Damian Priest. Rey had a nice... Uh, Springboard crossbody onto Damian Priest, followed up a nice DDT. Um, Priest went for that top rope choke slam, and Mysterio counted that into a Huracarana. Now he went for the 619. Finn Bauer got involved, and Dominic not pulled him off the ring apron. They fought outside the ring for a couple seconds. Again, Mysterio went for the 619. This time, Damian Priest counted up a nice big boot. Um, Ray. Finally, third time, he got the 619 on Damian Priest. Well, that just pissed him off. Because when he went for the splash off the top rope, Damian Priest countered it and just blasted Rey Mysterio with the razor's edge. After the match, um, Judgment Day went to deliver the concerto to Mysterio. Unless, they said, unless Dominic joins him. Dominic joined Judgment Day, folks. But then Finn Balor smashed him across the back of a steel chair. Uh, I like this, because Finn Balor said, you joined us because you want to save your dad. He didn't join us because you wanted to. He joined us because you had to. So next week on Raw, it's Rey Mysterio's 20th year anniversary edition of Raw. Um, so the Mysterio's going to face Judgment Day. Um, it, it's got to end up with Dominic going heel and, and turning on Rey. This would be a good time to do it on Rey's 20th your celebration episode. Um, but I actually would like to see both Mysterios join Judgment Day because I've never seen Ray as a heel in WWE. I want to see that before he retires. Just want to see how he can do. It was a good match. Uh, Mysterio had a lot more offense on Damian Priest than Damian Priest had on Mysterio. Last match to talk about. The phenomenal AJ Styles took on Mr. Money in the Bank, Austin Fury. They talked before the match. It's just like last week. There was way too much talking, by the way, before the matches. They talked back and forth. Um, AJ just smoked Austin Fury. Then the bell rang. AJ Styles just was all over Austin Fury. Like shoulder tackles in the corner. That uh, Fury came out of it, ripped AJ Styles into the turnbuckle. And AJ, you could see him jump up to smash his face into the top of the. Ring post, that I did not like seeing. Um, Austin Fury delivered a awesome, like, draw, like, a knee driver right to the back of AJ Styles. That looked nasty. AJ answered <laughs> back later on with a nice back body drop. Then um, Styles did that strike combo he does, but he changed it up. After he hit some chops, kicks, and punches, he usually follows up with a Pele kick, but this time he Changed it and just blasted Austin Fury of a clothesline. Outside of the ring, Dolph Ziggler showed up, by the way, watching the match again. Outside of the ring, Austin Fury bounced AJ Styles on top of the announce table. They were fighting. AJ got into the ring, went for the phenomenal forearm. Austin Fury tripped him on the ropes. Then, as the referee was checking on AJ Styles, Dolph Ziggler got up and super kicked Austin Fury. So, Austin Fury lost by count out. AJ Styles won by count out. So that's two weeks in a row now. Dolph Ziggler has cost Fury a main event match on Raw. After the match, AJ Styles delivered the Styles Clash on Austin Fury just for the fun of it. Um, there you have it, folks. Definitely check out AJ Styles versus Austin Fury. 
Um, Austin Fury really didn't get no offense in much, but it's just a very good way, a good match to showcase what, if you've never seen AJ Styles wrestle, this is a match to see what he can do. Definitely check out um, Elias versus Seth Rollins. To me, that match stole the show from all the other matches on the card. The 6 1 tag, that's just garbage. I wouldn't recommend watching that, folks, at all. Same as the Street Profits, Omos MVP. Uh, the Raw Women's Time match was okay. I just wish it went longer than it did. Um, and that and Bianca messed up again. And um, Mysterio and Damian Priest. It was an okay match. Just Damian didn't hard to get no offense in. So there you have it, folks. Stay safe, everybody. Too sweet. Bye.